Good day guys, Austin here, and in this video today, we're going to be looking at Cody. In fact, we're going to be pushing Cody to the limit. By the end of this video today, you will have movies, you will have TV shows, you will have live TV, you will have all your sports. In fact, you will have everything that you can possibly imagine Cody being able to do. And we're going to do it at the highest quality. Not just my tuition, because everyone knows that's the highest quality. <laughs> But I mean in terms of the add-ons and the way it's presented to you. We're really going to push this to the limit today to give you the most complete setup possible. Let's get stuck in. Okay then, first of all, let me just say... I am not endorsed by Cody at all. I am not endorsed by any of the programs or features that I'm going to show you today. In fact, most of the programs and features I'm going to show you today are pretty much third-party plugins, i.e. these are things that people have put together to aid you to get the extras that aren't normally available in a Cody setup. So, <laughs> it's common sense. If you go over to Cody and start asking questions and start bothering them because you can't, I don't know, stream your NFL game on live on Saturday or something like that, they're not going to be too best pleased. So please, guys, use a bit of common sense. It's the big wide world. Open your eyes a little bit and think of what's involved in the bigger picture. So now we've got our gypsies warning out the way. Let's actually get stuck in and get all this set up. Right then, first thing, common sense. We're going to have to go to the Cody website first off to get the actual program. So, link is down below. It's not exactly rocket science. It will lead you to this site here, which is obviously the Cody website. Now, Cody, as some of you, in fact, most of you, 98% of the world's population, will probably know that Cody used to be called X. BMC, uh, Xbox Media Center. Obviously, it's evolved quite a bit since then, and it's now the full on Cody release. And, well, this is what it is. So, here we are on the official website. What I want you to do then is go to the downloads tab here and you'll be greeted with a page similar if not identical to this one as you can see the first one that you have for the download is the current release and at this moment in time working we're working off Cody version 15.2 which is codenamed Isengard um, each version that is released gets a new name the next one will be Jarvis, as you can see here. Now, Jarvis is just about to be released, to be honest. We are currently on release candidate three, which means that it's pretty much on the tip of the iceberg. Beta testing's gone into action, and most of the bugs are ironed out. However, still some remain, and tormentors on a daily basis. So still, we're going to continue with the Isengard build. For those of you who want to live on the edge, you can also go for version 17, Krypton. And this is probably an alpha build. You probably have more crashes than playing when you load this one up. So, like I said, we're going to focus on Isengard. Um, and depending on what operating system and what device you're going to be using will dictate on which download you're going to be using. I'm going to be installing the Windows version. But what I'm going to take you through today will work on 99% of the actual installs of Kodi. So, like I said, we're going to be focusing on this one for now. Um, oh, I'm waiting for my internet to download it, but I'm going to live on the edge and use the one that I just downloaded a second ago. Windows is kicking off, and here we go. Alright, let's minimize that. We no longer need it. Alright then, the first thing you do when you click on the executable file when you download it is you'll get a screen similar to this one. Welcome to Cody Wizard Setup. It's not rocket science. I'm sure we've all done this many a time before. Click on everything that you go through. I would say keep all these ticks because they will aid you uh, once we start getting stuck into the more nitty gritty side of the uh, features and add-ons that we're going to be putting on there. Click next. Now you can decide where you want to install this, uh, where you want to install Cody basically. I would go for the default thing if you're not got anything special of a setup or anything like that. However, for the tutorial today, just so I know where everything is going, I'm going to actually install everything on my desktop. And then I'm going to make a folder. And I'm going to rename this folder uh, Cody Demo. Easy. Click on that. And as you can see, it's actually going to put me another bloody folder in there. She's going to wind me up, so delete that, and it's just going to install in that folder that we just created. Click on next, click on install, previous version of the, would you like to uninstall it, yes, 
sorry guys. I already had a version of Coldy which is quite up to date on this system. I must have been doing various tutorials before this. Um, but yeah, so as you can see I told it to uninstall and now we're going to go for a complete fresh install to give us the base layer of what we're going to work on. Wait forever while it downloads the, uh, sorry, uh, actually installs all the plugins, all the user interface, Kodi itself, drivers, all that kind of good stuff. And I don't want to run Kodi just now, I want to actually make sure it's running properly. Go in there, everything looks tickety-boo to me. Not that I'd know if anything was out of place at this point. <laughs> now I'm going to run it from its actual intended destination. What I'm also going to do is, just for peace of my mind, I'm going to give this administrator rights because I do want this to be able to change things on my system. So in, I've right-clicked it, I've gone to uh, preferences, now I'm in the Kodi, uh, sorry, properties, I'm going to go into the compatibility tab and I'm going to tick rid of administrator. Click apply, click OK. OK, now when I run this, it will have admin rights on the computer and it will allow it to do certain things such as make files on my computer. Now, as you can see, my computer is kicking off because Windows, it's a good thing. It's, it's figured out that this needs internet access and it's asking me, will I allow it? Yes, I will allow it. And there we go. Okay then, so this is your base install of Kodi. This is what you'll be greeted with when you first install it. Everything is at your disposal at this moment in time. However, nothing is configured. It's not linked up to anything, so it's pretty much useless until you start adding things. So now we've got this installed, let's actually get this ball rolling. Okay then, so like I said, this is what you are greeted with as soon as you boot up Kodi as fresh for the first time. There's not much going on here, it's not exactly very attractive, it's very standardised, and to be honest, this makes my eyes bleed because I've seen it so many times and it looks horrid to me. So what we're going to do is, first off, I'm going to show you how to gain access to some third party stuff, because first off, Kodi as standard, you can utilize it and you can install things and it gives you as standard access to quite a lot of programs, add-ons as it likes to call it, and you can do certain stuff. Now where it grabs it from is called the Kodi repository, so basically they're all the official standard Kodi um, add-ons that are officially, I don't know, sanctioned by Kodi. What I'm going to do now is show you how to add various other locations from where it can grab its add-ons from. These are called repositories. Uh, you can think of them as like a, a folder on a website somewhere, except instead of browsing the website, we're browsing it from inside Kodi. But what it needs is to be set up so it knows where to browse from. So that's what we're going to go in through. Then once that's done, I'm going to show you how to install them the long way, in other words, one by one, so you can install whatever programs. Take your fancy, um, indulge yourself to give you the movies, give you the TV shows, give you all that kind of stuff. I'll take you through it. However, at the end, what I'm going to do is kind of like the, the shortcut. And I know it sounds weird because I'm showing you at the end. But what it is is basically a another person's build. So you can just load it up and all the add-ons have installed for you. All the access to sports are done for you. All the access to the TV shows are done for you. The problem with this is if the apps become non-current, then those break very easily. So they those are very good for the short term. However, if you want your build of Kodi to last and to prosper throughout the years, then I implore you to set it up manually as I'm going to show you now. But like I said, I'm a good guy. I'm still going to show you how to do it the shortcut way at the end though. So first things first, let's actually do this the long way. It's not that long. It's just a complicated pain in the ass to set up first of all. Once you've got the, uh, the repository set up, it's just a case of adding whatever apps take your, take your fancy. Right, so we navigate the menus with the cursor keys. If we like something, we press enter. If you want to get out of it, we press escape. So navigate over to system, press down. That takes us to the sub menu within system. What we want to do is go to file manager. Like I said, we're going to be adding the location of these repositories. Uh, scroll down to add source, press enter. It will give you this kind of box. What we want to do is give it an address. These are all web addresses. I'm going to give you four locations, the most popular ones that will give you access to, I don't know, of course they're all third party apps, but these are the most tried, trusted ones out there. Um, 
yeah, we'll talk about this more in a second, but for now, let's actually get these installed. So, first one then is HTTP colon thing going on forward slash forward slash srp.nu. This is called Super Repo, and probably the most popular one out there. This is probably covering 95% of the apps, but we want to install everything, so I'm going to give you access to everything. So, what we're going to do now is give this a name. Now, the way it's organized, as we'll see in a short while, is in alphabetical order. What I want to do is differentiate the apps that are the repositories that I'm going to install from the various locations that are already there as standard. Uh, I also want to keep them at the top so I can utilize them quickly without messing around. So an easy way to do that is put a dot in front of it. Sounds complicated, but it's not. Um, then what I do is name it. doesn't make any difference what you name this, but I would... I can't even spell super repo but you can name this uh, anything you want but keep it something that you would be able to recognize and differentiate between all the other apps because basically we're going to install in a few ways so you want to know what you're installing and what each setup is there you go once it's done press ok and as you can see once it's done you'll end up with that at the top there at this point what we want to do is set that repo up so we press escape brings us back to the system menu press enter scroll down to add-ons um, and what we want to do is install from zip file now this sounds like it doesn't make sense but trust me guys just follow my lead for this time being once you've set the repos up you don't really need to bother with them ever again it's a pain in the ass at the beginning to set up but trust me it's worth it in the long run okay then at this point then you'll be seeing this if everything has gone tickety boo and everything's all right you will see the dot super repo or whatever it is you've called it at the top if i always click on enter here as you can see it gives me options again if something doesn't show here you haven't put the web address in correctly or you've named it incorrectly so what you want to do is choose whatever build of code you're working on as i said mine's isengard however we may have moved on to jarvis by the time you're doing this so whatever it is click on your current build mine's isengard and what i want to do is click on all because i want to install everything so by me clicking on the zip file here what it'll do is it'll install everything that is in there now if this has worked correctly i will get that which is a little pop-up inform me that the add-on has been enabled and certain things are you know, being put into place so we can utilize that as a as a I don't know like an app store kind of thing uh, right we've got more to add so let's not dwell upon this press escape press escape go into file manager again same process guys add a new source scroll up to wherever that is and the new location is HTTP colon thing going on uh, forward slash forward slash um, X unity talk dot me forward slash Xfinity and press it and there we go as you can see because it's kind of got a name on there it's already called it Xfinity so what I'm gonna do is just put that in front of it I know what it is and I put a dot there so I know where it's gonna be press OK escape out of here same with this thing again go into system go into add-ons install from zip and if everything's gone tickety boo click on here and as you can see we are starting to get the hang of it now more things are starting to kick in same process go on to the xunity talk or zunity however you pronounce that repository click enter and we should have a pop-up again there we go gives me the gives me the cozy thoughts at night knowing that it's working those pop-ups press escape escape same thing again like I said we should have two more of these to go now uh, file manager add source scroll on to where it says none and this one is called Cody dot metal kettle dot co I just want to call this metal kettle Again, you can call this whatever you want, guys. It doesn't make any difference this bit down here. It's just the address at the top that you have to be able to do. Could not receive. Yes. It looks like I may have messed that one up, actually. <laughs> um, if you do mess anything up, press right click, edit source. Ah, oh, basics. See? Look here, did something like this. I forgot to put the HTTP at the beginning. H 
http colon thing going on forward slash forward slash I suppose it's good for fault finding you guys. Now it shouldn't kick off. There we go. And now, if I was to click out of here, go into system, go into add ons, install from zip, it's added there. Now, if it's worked correctly, I should see some things going on inside this folder. There we go. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is click on repository metal kettle. Yours might m look a little different. What you want to be doing is basically installing the one thing that looks the biggest the main repository, the main bit of gumph, and usually it is some kind of zip file unless it's within a folder. And again, should have a little pop up. There we go. Okay, and the last one, and the program that I'm going to show you how to set up, and the most useful one out there also. Escape out of here. File manager, add source, click on there. Now as we can see we have got various ones set up. What I'm going to do now is show you one specifically for one program that I'm going to show you how to set up in detail so you can do all the programs yourself. Um, what this one is called is HTTP colon thing going on forward slash forward slash team expat dot ninja you can tell it's not that legit because look at the address forward slash uh, repo sorry my fingers don't seem to be working today and that is it press done Obviously, I don't want to call it repo because that's generic, so I'm going to call this um, team dot team expat. Easy. Click OK. Now, hopefully, same thing again. Escape out of there. Click on system. Click on add ons. Install from zip. Uh, team expat should be there. Click on there. And yes, it's worked because I've got access to it all. So now if I just click on here, it will give me access to that. Okay, so that is how you set up the repositories. We now have given um, Cody access to all those various places, kind of like giving it access to loads of app stores. And now what we're going to do is actually, well, I'm going to show you how to install an app. In fact, I'm going to show you how to install a very good app because this is probably the most latest one that's out there. So, here we go. Okay then, so we got our Kodi up and running and we've got our repositories up and running. So now we can basically install everything to our heart's content. And that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to show you, in fact, probably the most up-to-date one, which has just hit the block, as they say. The one that is good for movies and TV. It's not done in the... Well, the normal way of install, the normal way you would install your apps is basically to go into, I don't know, say for example you want a video app, in other words, to uh, to play your movies or whatever, you go into videos, add-ons, uh, you've got not installed so it won't display any, so you go into get more, and it would bring up all your video add-ons, and because we've added those repositories, it wouldn't just look for the standard ones. So you'd get the ones that aren't normally available, and there is some very good ones out there. But again, beware, there's some crap ones out there. There's some ones that aren't really updated that often, so they break. And there's well, there's that many. You'd be there all day, and that's why I'm not going to go through installing each and every one. But what I am going to do is show you how to install um, at least one. So the first thing we're going to do then is go over to system go into add-ons and what are we looking for we don't want a video add-on we want a program add-on now this program is add-on installer and this has got well Think of this as we call them like wizards or something. Basically, this will opens up a sub menu where you can install other features from within there. I suppose it's not a wizard in particular. We'll look at those in a bit more detail later on. But this is like an, an add on within an add on, if that makes sense. We'll look into it anyway. So that's now installed on our system. Now, what we can do is go into programs, 
and as we can see we've got add on installer option open to us uh, let it do what it does and as you can see we've got this menu this wonderful menu in front of us now the only reason why I installed this is because it's the best way to get to the actual add-on or program that I want to be running from within here so the add-on is a video add-on and this should hopefully install it however as you can see there's loads in here which are very good and you know I put my name to for example Phoenix amazing um, I don't know what else we're going for salts is good Navi there's loads here to be playing around with but the one that I'm focusing on and the new one to hit the block is this Exodus I'm just gonna Oop. click the wrong button I've right clicked instead of left clicked I'm gonna do is add that on do you wish to chosen that on to be written yes install I want to do everything takes a second to do what it does. Now what I'm going to do is come all the way out of here. Now normally when you just install a video add-on, what it'll do is it'll just install the video add-on. However, some of these add-ons are very complicated and they require other add-ons to be installed with it. By doing it the way we just done it, what it's done is it's installed Exodus along with some other programs or features which need to be enabled to make this work to its full capabilities. So as you can see now in our video add-ons, we now have Exodus, a very good program because it's the first one, first time we loaded it up, it's given us, you know, what's happened to it. Okay, ignore what it's just said. Okay, so this is what you are greeted with, this. And as you can see, it is beautiful. <laughs> There's not much going on. For me, for my peace of mind, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show big icons because I can't stand the default ones. And as you can see, we can choose between movies, TV shows, channels. So if I was to look at a movie, go into here, and there's loads of different um, ways I can, I don't know, search for my movies. So I don't know. Let's have a look at um, um, most popular. Now, as you can see, it loads up in various different ways. It's um, well, in different art, and this. Or <laughs> this program may be recognizable to other people. Basically, Genesis, the one that I was talking about earlier on, the one that would be used for movies and TV. What this has done, apparently, rumor has it, is made by the same guy. The guy that let Genesis kind of slip. Not for his reasons, but for others. And basically, this one was reborn. It's basically identical, except this one works the way that Genesis used to work. Now, Genesis, for those of you who've been in the scene for some time, you know that Genesis is the number one or was the number one choice when it comes to movies and TV shows. Um, however, it, it become very restricted and now when you go searching for your movies and things like that, you, you're very limited in your choices. Now with this Exodus, the exact same format, the exact same thing, in fact you get the exact same vibe of it all, um, you now get a lot more options. See, for example, I don't know what's new here, let's have a look at Jurassic World. What I'll do by clicking on this is it will then bring it up and give me choices of locations of where I can watch this from. It will also tell me the kind of uh, video quality that I'm going to be looking at. So if I want a 1080p, give it a second. And as you can see, there we go, 1080p, Jurassic World, boom, straight to my TV. Cheers, easy! So what I don't want to do is get YouTube kicking off because I'm watching movies. Uh, but that's it. That's how easy it is. So now we've got all our TV shows. Now we've got all our movies. I don't know. Any movie you could ever imagine is on there. Trust me, guys. Um, you'd have to have some pretty obscure music choices. Music? Movie choices to not be able to find it on here. All you need to do is go down to search. You can search people or you can search by movie. Um, I don't know. For example... I really don't know. X-Files. Oh, can't even type. Oh, can't even type again. Forgot the enter thing. So now we'll look for all X Files movies, and there you go. If 
if I was to watch one, I don't know, which is the most modern, 2008. Come on, just show me the year. How big is that title? Okay then. So it's just doing now, it's searching the whole internet and finding loads of different versions of this movie. Because it's obviously a little bit obscure, it's found these. However, if it was to load it up. Boom, there we go. As you can see, every time, always finds your stuff. Like I said, you'd have to have some pretty obscure choices of film taste or TV shows to uh, not be able to find it on here. Now, this is a pretty, I don't know, simple theme. It works, everything like that. It makes my eyes bleed, uh, to be honest. I'm not going to lie to you. But if you want to change your theme, start customizing this, all you need to do is go over to System, Appearance, Skin, click on the skin and where it says get more basically it will pull up a big list go through go to the internet you know go on YouTube whatever there's loads of different places you can get new and brave new <laughs> skins to completely transform the way this looks and interacts with your computer with your Android box with whatever it is that you're using it from but that's the add-ons added that's TV added that is how you add things to this. Now, for me to go through every one and show you how to set it up, I'm going to be there all day. They're all pretty much generic from now on. Um, but now what I'm going to do is show you how to do a complete build from scratch. In other words, just to load somebody else's version of Kodi. So there's no configuration, there's no need to add add-ons. But like I said, it's good to know how to do it, and that's why I showed you from scratch. So anyway, without further ado, let's go. Okay, so we are up to the stage where we've got Cody installed, we've shown you how to put in the repositories, or the places where it can find more of the third party apps or add-ons. We've shown you how to install the add-ons, you can now go and install as many add-ons as you want, but like I said, research whatever it is you put into it. Now what I'm going to show you to do, which sounds a bit higgledy-piggledy, is to uh, install the entire thing, like a pre configured version of Kodi. Now you're probably thinking why didn't I just show you this at the beginning? I probably wouldn't then have to go through about a thousand different configurations and tutorials of how to do all the stuff that we just covered. However, you've got to think about these are pre-configured builds. Now these are pre-configured to somebody's or to an organization's or a team of people's um, configuration. They may come from a different country. They might like different sports. They might like different TV shows. They may have a different preference on what add-ons to be using they may have no experience in this whatsoever and it's just a bunch of kids in a room somewhere putting it all together you've got to think of the mentality on all this now there are some very good ones which are kept updated and I would um, implore you to search Google go on the internet find the most up-to-date pre-configured versions I'm going to show you now how to uh, set them up but yeah do a bit of research before we do this now like I said these are pre-configured a lot of them are not looked after very well. In other words, they're using plugins which are outdated for previous versions of Kodi. They're not as configurable. Uh, they've got their slogans all over the place and they may not float your boat. But yes, these are a quick fix or an alternative to setting this up from the start yourself. However, you still need to know how to work it, how to utilize, how to make plugins happen, how to fix them and all that kind of stuff. That's why I did this higgledy piggledy because I would prefer you to build your own the way you like it then use somebody else's wait 10 minutes every time you load it up for the plugins to install to update to do all the things you do load all the things and most of them you don't even need because they're all in different languages oh the list goes on but anyway enough of my negativity let's get positivity on the go and show you how to do this it's not that hard at all basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over to system go down to file manager as we did before and we're going to add another repository so in this case we're going to add source now this one goes up and down like a yo-yo sometimes it's on sometimes it's not so be aware of that if there are any changes to the address or anything like that i'll do my best to put in the description down below so if you have any errors once you put this uh, address in there look in the description down below and i'll keep you updated with the latest address for this repository but for now the one that i'm using is the old http uh, colon thing going on forward slash forward slash res wizard 
Excuse the way I'm pronouncing this. It's uh, the, way, the way my mind works. S R V E dot I O forward slash E W underscore zip. Jesus, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Why couldn't they just call it Dave.com or something like that? But no, that's the way it's done. Now what you need to do is navigate over to where it says done, press done. Uh, again, give it a name. Obviously I'm not going to call it that because that sounds stupid. So I'm going to call it, I don't know, dot res. So I know what it is. It's at the top of the list. Um, again, click on done. And that should be it. At this point when I click OK, if everything's gone good, it should just add. If there's any problems with the address or anything like that, then it'll probably get a pop-up at this point. Look in the description down below and there'll probably be an updated version, hopefully. Okay, then press escape. The same again, we need to go into system, we need to go into add-ons, and we need to install from zip. As you can see, it's worked. Now, if it's properly worked, when I click on this, we'll have some kind of structure going on. So what I need to do is click on this. Now, what's in here may change from by the time you do it. As it's saying, at this point in time, uh, if you not get dependencies met, in other words, if an error kicks off with saying dependencies met or anything like that, go into the module thing and install those also. But for 99% of us out there, we should be able to click on this. It should give us a little pop-up and the fuzzy feeling on the inside. Come on! And there we go. As a RS wizard enabled. It'll probably give some other pop-ups as well. Do not worry. Okay, it's given us the wizard error. Sometimes it's because it takes some time for the rest of the stuff to download. However, let's give it a test. Let's see if there is an error. Like I said, sometimes you just have to wait. Because this is a fresh copy of Cody, a lot of the things haven't been updated, a lot of the things haven't been configured correctly in terms of going on the internet and sorting itself out. Because a lot of this is internet based. So what I want to do is go on to programs and hopefully we should see it in there. There we go. What I'm going to do is, if you click to the left, you can bring up this list and you can change the layout of it. I like the little icons going on. So I'm going to see the icon. There it is, Ares Wizard. Change log seems to be working. It's just telling you what's been going on. Click OK. Yeah. Right. Click Escape. Click on there again and hopefully it'll load this time. And here we go. Basically, it's a little ugly looking. I'm not going to blow the trumpet on that one. But as you can see, there's loads of different things that you can do. It's a bit. It's a bit of a. Like I said, it's a wizard. It can be utilized to clean up, to change things within your Kodi setup. It's a lot more advanced and user friendly than before. One of the main things is uh, browse builds. Now, what you've got here is loads of different versions of Kodi. They are, like I said, pre configured. They've got their own little setups going on. And they're all done by various different people to various different standards. Um, as you can see, some of them are a lot more um, demanded than other people, let's say. But, yeah, download one. If it doesn't work your way, go back in, download another one, keep it going. Find the one that suits you. Some of them will work more than others. Um, I don't know. I'm British, so I'm going to try Cody uh, UK builds. Let's give it a go. And then within here, as you can see, it's got three different builds done by them. Nemesis, Dad Life, and Books. Mm, I think I've used Nemesis before. I'm just going to show you this as a demo because I know that it's going to work. As you can see, it's now downloading. Gee whiz, it's going to take some time. Uh, my internet is shocking, so I suppose we'll just have to, to wait and see. What I'm going to do now is knock this recording off and come back in just a second. Okay, so as you can see, it's just about to finish, and ba-boom. Now what it's going to do is go in, uh, let's say install everything, set everything up, make sure everything is set up as standard. Hopefully you should get no errors at this point. Um, I suppose you start getting errors if you had ill-configured programs installed that weren't compatible with this kind of uh, theme and setup that you're just about to put it on there and also if you're running an older version of Kodi but as you can see we were loading the 
the newest version, Isengard. Hopefully Jarvis by the time you're doing yours. Okay, so as you can see, do you want to back up the skin profile? This will enable the build repair option which you can restore to the build visuals. In other words, what it's going to do is going to take a, a snapshot of your Cody build at this moment in time. If you do not like the theme that you're going to be going into, then basically you can revert back to the way it was afterwards and it'll put everything back, hopefully, to where you left it. So there we go. I've took a quick snapshot of it. Cody needs to be closed to attempt to close Cody. Okay, now what will happen is, hopefully, the next time I launch into Cody, it will work perfectly. Okay, so now we're going to load it up and hopefully, it should all be sorted. Click on OK, yes, blah de blah and there we go. As you can see, it's going to take a little bit for it to embed itself in. It's got quite a lot of things going on. And it's probably going to start going mental as it starts updating everything that was involved with the skin. There may be some errors, there may be things kicking off about how it wants to, for example here, update itself. It's not in full screen, so I'm going to have to go into the menu to put it full screen. Basically, what's happened is, I've it's now been set up to the default of the... Uh, the user who set this up in the first place, does that make any sense? So I'm going to have to go in there and sort things out to my own specification. For example, the full screen thing. I'm not going to leave it as it is. But I'm not going to mess around with it too much because this, like I said, it's going to start going mental. Everything's going to start updating. There's going to be some errors. So it's just going to, you're going to walk away, you're going to have a cup of tea, <laughs> take a chill for a while, come back five minutes later and hopefully it will be calm. By that point, you should be able to uh, navigate around there. Everything should start to be more update. Everything should be start more instinctive, so you don't have to wait for things to load all the time. If you have to press down, then what you can do is you can quick act, quickly access various different parts and different add-ons that's installed with this theme. Of course, you can add your own. Of course, you can change the theme itself. Of course, you can change everything about this. <laughs> anyway, look forward. Now what we've got is our, I don't know, our Cody set up, configured to the ultimate, I don't know, configuration that you can think of. Either you can make it yourself or you can use one of the wizards or pre-built uh, versions that I've just helped you out to set up. Um, in the future, what I'm going to be doing is, everybody knows, with my channel, I do things with doing with games, retro stuff, and front ends. I'm going to incorporate all that into Cody. So basically, you can launch anything from within Cody, whether it be your PC games, all your games itself, all your ROMs. I'm going to be turning it into both a front end and a launcher in case you want to use a uh, another front end. Uh, for those of you who want to know about front ends, check out my channel. There's all kinds of information, uh, guides, tutorials, and setups along with them things. So hopefully, we've all learned something today, and we've all brought another string to our bowls because now we've got even more media at our fingertips. Hopefully, I've not confused too many people, and I've done this into a kind of structure that most people can understand. My apologies if I waffle on; it's my style. I like to explain things as I go along. If you don't like that kind of stuff, there's plenty of more tutorials out there. If you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and uh, wish me well. If you've got any add-ons, any features or anything like that, any ideas, or if you've got any problems, put them in the comments down below. I'll try my best to answer them. I'll try my best to make the ones that you request. And of course, I'll make the sun shine brighter wherever you live. <laughs> no, I won't. But I will try and help you out as much as I can. Anyway, guys, please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe. But most of all, guys, most of all, you have a good day. <laughs> Laters, guys.